tension that a muscle is able to generate at any given time is what determines the amount of force it can exert. However, the amount of tension a muscle can create is not the same across all actions and it is definitely not the same across all movement speeds. The force velocity relationship explains this characteristic of muscle. The force velocity relationship may be the most important characteristic of human skeletal muscle. It states that as the velocity of shortening or contraction of the muscle increases, the force it can exert decreases. This means that a fast movement corresponds to a low force output from the muscle, and a slow movement, when of low velocity, corresponds to high force output. To understand this, imagine that you are performing a bench press with a very light weight. Since the weight is so light, you can push very hard and the weight will move very quickly. Since this light weight is moving so quickly, your muscles are contracting very quickly. Therefore, no matter how hard you push, the actual force output will be very low. Now, if you put on some more plates and make the barbell very heavy, your hard push will result in a slow bar movement. This slow bar movement against this very heavy weight means you are putting out a lot more force. For students of maximal strength, this tells us that we can never exert maximal force against a relatively light load. The image in the video is an idealized version of the force velocity curve. The red line is the total force and the axis at the bottom is the velocity of shortening. Now look to the right of this axis. This represents maximum velocity of shortening, in other words, very fast movement. As you can see, the red force line bottoms out, virtually no force at the highest movement speed. Now as the axis moves to the left, you can see that the red force line goes up. You are seeing that as the movement slows down, the force output goes up. The spot where the bottom axis reaches the vertical or force axis is zero velocity. You can see that this corresponds with an abrupt rise in force. This would be an isometric action against a presumably immovable object. The muscle can produce its maximum force, but no actual work is being performed. Near maximum strength movements takes place to the right of this big rise in force, where the velocity is very slow, but not nil. Now, to the left of this, see that the force keeps going up. This is the eccentric action, where the muscle is lengthening under load. During this action is when muscles can generate the most tension. Bet you didn't know that. That's right, the muscles can actually produce more force under eccentric conditions. This is why you can lower a heavier weight than you can raise on something like the bench press. This effect is not infinite, however. You are probably wondering what the green line is for. The green line represents power. Most athletic pursuits require high power outputs rather than high total force outputs. This is the area of the curve an Olympic lifter is concerned with, for instance. The point where the green and red lines intersect is the area of highest power. This is when there is almost equal contribution from acceleration and force. Now, since we know that to gain maximum strength, we must consistently exert high forces against external loads, what does the force velocity relationship tell us? It tells us that it doesn't matter how hard we go at it if the weights are too light. Light weights will mean faster movement and faster movement will mean low force. Low force means we will never be very strong as compared to lifting with high force against heavy loads. We could try to cheat by intentionally slowing down the movement, but in that case the highest force needed would still be low since the weight itself is low.